everybody. So today's project is we're going to do some maintenance on the 35G mini excavator. I've got it pulled in the barn and I've got the light set up and I just pulled it in so the engine's still warm. So we're going to start with changing the oil. We're going to change all of the filters and uh, do, the, do the maintenance. It's going to grease everything and also this thumb operates backwards from the way I would like it to operate. And I think what I can do is just switch these fittings and then turn this cylinder around and then the thumb will operate the way I want it to. And I've been putting it up with it since I've had it and it's not a huge deal. But right now, when you hit this, it closes the thumb. When you hit that, it opens it. And what I want to do is press it this way to close so it's kind of like your hand. And the funny thing about that is our friend that has the 50, his thumb was the same way. So that's one of the reasons I know, obviously, it can be turned around, is we've already done this once on that uh, John Deere 50 that was out here. So hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one, y'all. Okay, here is our bag of filters. And I pretty much bought every filter that was on this machine. And the total ended up being $179.95. And like I said, all this came from the John Deere store, but I've got the inner and outer air filter element. I've got a oil filter. I've got a fuel filter. Uh, let's see, I've got the hydraulic filter. I've got the screen, fuel water screen separator. So pretty much every filter that you can put in it is here. And like I said, I figured do this maintenance right. And I've got a whole bunch of grease also, which I did not buy from the John Deere store. To be honest, uh, we have a Napa here a lot closer than the John Deere store. And the next time I do this, I'll probably switch to Napa filters. They've taken care of me with my bulldozer filters that I've got. So we're going to do it like this, so this time. All righty, I'm going to start with the air filter elements because they're probably the easiest. And both the inner and outer element are right under this cover. So there are two spring clips. Pull the element out. There is the outer element. And here is the inner element. And these just pull out. So actually, they look pretty good. But I'm going to go ahead and change them. Okay, so when changing your filters, you want to make sure that they're the same. And these are. And the interior element also is the same height and shape and opening. Uh, I bought this excavator uh, just over a year ago. And I got it from CNC Equipment. And they did the maintenance on it uh, when I bought it. And you can see that the last time this filter was changed, it had uh, 2,477 hours on it. And I now have 2,672. So we're at 197 hours. And the recommended time hours on uh, service is 250. So I'm a little ahead of that, which is fine by me. Like I said, I use this more occasionally. I don't make money with it. Uh, but it is awful handy to have around and I've got a bunch of big jobs lined up this year for it So we'll go ahead and change this out The other thing that I'll point out is they do have the hours and the date that they change this uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing as I change this out. I'm gonna wipe out this dust that's inside there And wipe out the cap write the hours and the date on these filters so with that on there it's going to slide up inside that groove when you do this don't use a black sharpie because it won't show up so now that i've got the date wrote on it slide it up push it in place okay with the filters in place 
We're gonna slide the cap back on. We're gonna make sure the drain's at the bottom. And then this clip goes on, clips down. Same with the other one, which is on the bottom. Alrighty, so that's done. Let's move on to changing the oil. Alrighty, we're underneath the machine. We've got a 19 millimeter socket. Put it on reverse. Okay, and we're gonna drain the oil. And it's already leaking into the pan. Turn this quick. Doesn't look like it's got a magnet on it, but there's no metal stuck to it, so that might be a good thing. Okay, and I will open the valve to let it get air in the fill cap. There we go. <laughs> nice black oil. Well, I thought I had it loose enough to finish by hand. Okay, there it is. This is a Yanmar engine in this. And one of the things that's kind of cool about that is, if you can see it down in there, there you go. They put a little tray here to catch the oil that comes out of the filter that goes to a hose that then goes into the oil pan. So, kind of keeps it a little cleaner. Okay, I'm going to put a little grease around that seal. It's the same filter, same size opening and everything. So, I'll get that put back in. Okay, so I'll peel the plastic off this filter. And then I'm going to put a little grease, like this red grease, on the o ring. And then I'm going to put that back on. Uh, I did write. The date 222 and the hours 2672 on the filter just to be able to keep track make sure i never go over that 250 hour service interval and on these i never use a wrench to tighten the filters if my arthritis keeps getting worse someday i may <laughs> But I've never had one leak, and I always just put them on hand tight, and I've never been able to not get a filter off when I go to change them. So it seems to work for me. Okay, I'll put the drain bolt back in. Here's that hose. You can see that, where that little tray drains to. That's kind of nifty. Make it a little cleaner. And normally, I would do this outside. The reason I'm in the barn today doing this maintenance is because it's like, I think it might be 20 degrees outside. It's sunny and it looks nice, but it is cold. And again, I've got some jobs lined up. Uh, there are 50 degree temps in the next 10 day forecast. And I've got several little jobs already lined up for this. So I wanna get the maintenance done on it and be ready. To go to work okay so the drain bolts in and tight it takes 7.6 quarts so just under two gallons of oil 
is the actual uh, capacity with a filter change, according to the book. And of course, we'll use the dipstick to make sure the oil level is correct. All right, let's start it up and check it. Just to get the stuff in the filter. Okay, now let's check the oil. And that's, I'm very happy with that. It's just below the fill mark. So, I will run it like that and I don't have much of an equipment budget so I check that oil and things like that every time I run it so I'm gonna leave it there so I'd have rather have it just barely under full than any over full okay so let's get this fuel filter off of here and I do have a catch pan under it Oh, it's tight, but it's going. And the catch pan is catching that. That's good, it dripped off the... Didn't catch all that. Dang it. So we'll put the new one on. I've got the date and the hours written on it, which that one also had the date and the hours written on it. So it was either changed at the same time or they wrote the same hours on it anyway. And it's right there in the front where I can see it, so it's perfect. Okay, so here is the fuel water separator uh, filter, and I've got the new filter for that that I'll put in. The way this works is if you had water in the fuel, you should be able to see it through this uh, plastic cap, and the water obviously would be at the bottom of this diesel fuel. So to drain this, turn off the fuel coming into this, open this, drain quite a bit okay put something under it I'm using a solo cup now then by turning the filter back on it drains in this case it's draining fuel out but if there were water in that it would drain that and you can see as you can see that was just fuel so that's good Okay, so to drain the fuel out of the fuel water separator, leave this drain valve open and take this 10 millimeter bolt, loosen it, which will allow air into this. We've got the fuel shut off coming in and that'll allow air into the top, letting the fuel drain out the bottom. We'll use a little cup to catch that. Okay. So fuel's going into the cup. Wish it was going a little faster. See if I can open it up just a little more.
And I'll just go ahead and pull this whole bolt out. Maybe that'll speed it up. Uh, not really. Okay, you can see it's draining though. If my cup was a little shorter, oops, let's take that whole drain out. Maybe I'll do that. There we go. Oops. Glad it quit. It holds about a red solo cup. <laughs> okay, so this filter is ridiculously tight. Uh, it's, when I use my wrench to try and loosen it, it's been in the, the bracket that holds it. So I'm gonna put this pry bar in here to try to hold that. Okay, and there it finally came off. Okay, this then just pulls out. And it simply slides up into place. This ring is your water level thing. It'll float to show you if you've got water in there, which we did not. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on them threads. I don't know if that'll help, but that was ridiculous. So I just put a little bit of grease on that. I don't think it will hurt anything, but maybe it'll make it where I can get this off next time I go to change it. cross thread and it is going to be important as well. Okay, I think that is plenty tight enough. Now put this in. And lastly, put the little screw back in, the air screw. Now then, as far as priming this, it has a electronic fuel pump on it. So all we have to do is turn the key on and let the fuel pump Run for a few minutes and fill this back up. Turn on the valve. You can see a little bit of fuel came in. We turn the key on. And you can see the filter filling up with fuel. Okay, so it should be full. There are no leaks. Let me just start it up for a second, see what happens. Okay, so it's still got a little air in the line. Let it click for a few more seconds. So the fuel system has had all the filters changed in it. Nothing's leaking. And we haven't spilled any fuel all over the garage, which is a good thing. Maggie didn't like that smell. <laughs> okay, so let's do the hydraulic filter next. Then we'll move on to uh, greasing it and changing the way that thumb operates. Alrighty, the last filter that we've got is the hydraulic filter. It's under this cover. So, wipe it off, 
and again it was serviced the same time as the rest of this and on both the water separator filter and this hydraulic filter they just wrote the dates of service and the hours on the outside of the cover did you hear that it just uh, take a fill cap off the hydraulic system to relieve the pressure so it doesn't relieve when you open up the lid to the filter. Anyway, what I'm going to do is take some uh, label maker stickers and put on those two filters instead of actually writing them on something. So this is a 13 millimeter socket. And there are four bolts here to get to that filter to change it. cap off okay so we'll pull the spring out I'm gonna set it right here on the cap reach in here let this filter let this stuff drain a little bit okay so it goes there Pull the filter. Okay, I'll let it drain, drip for a second. and both ends of this are identical put it inside and you can feel a little detent that that sits in okay and this was on top next then the spring it's on top of that. And then we'll put the cover back on. Okay, so instead of writing on this cap like they did before and then have to figure out how to get that off, I just made little labels. And if I can get the paper off the backing, cross there. There we go. Do the same thing on this fuel filter, fuel water separator. Okay, so the date and the hours, right there. Okay, so all of the oil change and filter change uh, has been done on this machine. The next thing that I'll do, I have two things left, but the next thing that I'll do is change the way this thumb operates and make it the way I want. Uh, and to do that, we'll unplug this hose and this hose. I think I'll have to switch this fitting to that line and the other way around. Then we just have to take this pin out spin this cylinder 180 degrees and plug the lines back in on the other side and it should do it so should be a quick fix 
we'll see how it goes. Okay, there we go. There's one. That was easy. So if you didn't see, and that's the first time I've unplugged one of these big hydraulic couplers, but there's a detent right here at the bottom, and you just had to, I had to spin that coupler around until it lined up with that detent, and then it slid back real easy. So let's go to the other side and see if I can get that one done. Okay, so same thing. I'll spin that. Oops, there we go. So the detent comes around. So yes, uh, and this is what I thought. This coupler has to go on that fitting. So, and this one has to go it, to it. So what we'll do is take these fittings off and switch them and then spin the line around, the cylinder around, and plug them back in. So hang on. Okay, so these fittings, uh, the big part is inch and a quarter, and the smaller part is seven eighths. Let's see if we can bust this loose while I've got you in frame. Oh my. There we go. It did move. Yep. It's too far. <laughs> See if it'll go through there. Oh, beautiful. Oh, we got lucky. I figured I'd try that one first. So it was one. Okay, so now I'm right. lay those down. Yeah. Get this kind of key out of there. Okay, squeeze that back together so you probably shouldn't reuse those, but I'm going to. I record all the parts for the good. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Uh huh. Okay, so we need to get this hose out of the way. I think I'm gonna see if I can get it bent up this way. Yep, okay. Now, that's all I need to do. Here, just pull it. I am, but I was gonna put my stuff down. Now, okay, now then. Spin it. Where's that copper key? To get that flat face coupler connected, I had to break the line here and let it leak out to relieve the pressure. And I still couldn't get it plugged in. So I came down here and broke the line here to relieve the pressure on the other side of the coupler. And now they're plugged in. 
and I think everything's tight where nothing will leak. So let's try it out. Okay, so from this side, closes. Okay, so that fitting is not leaking. That fitting is not leaking. Down here where I had to break the line, I don't think it's leaking. Time will tell on that. <laughs> and finally, up here, it's not leaking. So we've got the cylinder turned around. We've got the thumb operating the way we wanted it to. So now all we gotta do is grease this thing. Okay, so next I'm gonna check the drive motor oil and this takes a five millimeter Allen wrench. Open it up. And the way this works is if oil just barely seeps out of this hole, it's full of oil. I heard some air go and there's some oil getting ready to go. So now that we know it had oil in it, we know it didn't leak. Now we'll take the drain bolt, which is the bottom one, out. Oh yeah, sure we will. Right, let's see how this goes with the breaker bar. There we go. There it goes. Just want to be careful I don't round out those. And there we go. So that oil doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Don't see water in it. And it doesn't look horribly filthy. That's uh, just regular uh, 80, 80 W90 gear oil. Okay, that's pretty much drained all out. So I'm gonna put this bottom one back in. And then move over to the other side and drain it. Check bolt out first. And again, air rushed out. We'll see if any oil does. This doesn't have oil coming out of it like the other one did. Oh yeah, there it comes. So it maybe wasn't as full as the other one, but it had oil to that level at least.
Okay, so that's pretty much stopped dripping. So I'm gonna put the cap back in. Drain hole. Film this and stay out your way. The shot. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is back this up just a couple inches so that this hole's not directly above that hole. Okay, so now that the uh, fill hole is not directly above the check hole, we'll fill it up. And I read online that uh, the D takes seven tenths of a quart, and it barely looks like there's over a quart in that pan after draining both sides. So I'll put about a half quart in them, and like I said, fill them up until the oil starts to seep out of that hole. Okay, so I'm gonna slowly fill these up till oil starts coming out the check hole. And this is just 80W90 blue oil. Okay, that's gotta be about a half quart. Yep, and there it comes. See how instead of running straight down with gravity, it ran over there? It was probably a high school lesson in viscosity <laughs> in that, but I'm not that smart. Okay, and we'll put the fill plug in. Of course, these are universal. They can be drain plugs or fill plugs, depending on if they're at the top or the bottom. Uh, in case anybody was wondering, this is the first time I've done maintenance on this excavator. And this is the first excavator I've ever had or done maintenance on. So, kind of figuring it out with the help of YouTube and filming it as we go. Okay, let's move to the other side, top it off, and then this job will be complete. Put a little oil in it until it starts coming out that check hole. And again, we'll do this slow so that we don't overfill it too much before it starts coming out the hole. That should be pretty close to the amount we put in the other side. So that it's coming out the check hole. So this drive motor is now full. So we'll tighten it all up and this part is done. Drain is tight, it is. And then we'll put the fill cap in it. Okay, on to greasing. Alrighty, uh, so that pretty much does the John Deere 35G maintenance video and thumb attachment change. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is go around and grease everything. And while doing that, if I run into any grease fittings that won't take grease, I'll get them changed out. And I'm going to use my DeWalt grease gun to do this. 
with the quick coupler. God dang it. And there comes the grease. So that's greased. And I'm not gonna keep you guys here while I do all these. But I'm gonna go around and do all of them. One of these days, I'm gonna count how many fittings this thing has. But today, I'm just gonna get them all greased. And what I do is I watch for new grease to come out of wherever it is that we're greasing. There's a swing bearing grease. Get those on there. Nope, didn't get on there. Well, that completes our John Deere 35G maintenance video. We've got it all greased up, all of the fluids changed, except for the hydraulic fluid, all of the filters changed, including the hydraulic fluid, and every grease circuit fitting on this has been greased. All of them took grease, which I was happy about that. Usually when I do the Teramite, there's at least one or two that I have to change out. Uh, but like I said, this one, well, this machine had been well, well maintained before I got it. And I'm going to do my best to make sure it stays well maintained because uh, this will probably be the only excavator I ever own. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one. Yep. Yep. I'm videoing right now. Let's see if you can grab her or get her to fly. Jack. I know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go.